Yeah. If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask that you turn to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to begin reading in verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 45. The Bible says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is uh, is the Lord from heaven. As it as it as is the earthy such are they also that are earthy, and as is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter, uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have been put on, shall have be, uh, shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, "Death is swallowed up in victory." Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the scripture, Lord. We. Uh, Find it more and more as our only abiding place. God, help us today to preach your word, to be faithful to what the scripture says, and not for what man would like it to say. Bless it to the hearts of your hearers, Lord, and we be faithful to give you the praise and the glory for it. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, Paul begins in the kind of the middle of, of chapter 15 beginning to describe the condition of man and ultimately where we would arrive. Now we're going to look at a number of things but the base thing of this whole passage is this, this man that you can see, this flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, it has no dwelling place there. It has no part of that place. And in fact, if we could be there, we quickly corrupt the whole thing Amen. as Adam did in the earth. Amen. And because of that, we'll be a separate race, we'll be a different people then, and that comes only with the putting away of this. Right. And you know what? What I have found in my 53 years, the longer we go, the more this is valued. Uh, you know, it, it was when I was a boy, everybody knew that you were eventually going to die. And, you know, people didn't live as long back then. And, you know, I think the reality, even in that, it made death more real. Uh, I remember lots of men working on the farm and literally dying while they were tending tobacco. And that was just part of life. And now we have advanced medical care, and it's almost convinced our race that death can be avoided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But are, at the very least, postponed. But let me tell you, you will die at the very moment that the Almighty has set for you to die, and no team of doctors in this world will ever prevent right. that. Uh, the only thing, you know what health care can really offer you is a measure of comfort, and, that, and that's pretty minuscule. And, and so we find that Paul begins to address the condition of man as he truly is. In verse 45, he begins, 
And <clears throat> this is kind of taken out of Genesis. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. Now what he is uh, referring back is when the Lord God made man and says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Now that sets us apart from all other creation of every animal and this shows we are not animalistic, although that's what the world will teach you. It will teach you that uh, any decision is okay because you can't help it anyway. You know what that is? That's nothing more than an authorization to sin. And that's what they want. And, but I, I'm here to tell you this morning, we're very different than animals. We have a never dying soul and they do not. And many years ago, and I was managing this little home health over here, and one of my nurses, a very intelligent lady, an RN, she had a dog that died home, and uh, it died, and she said, well, I'll see it in glory one day. And I couldn't help but chuckle a little bit. And she looked at me just as strange. I said, that dog ain't gonna be in glory. And uh, I said, I'm sure you love that dog dearly, but it's not an eternal soul. And uh, she looked at me odd. And so uh, I took her in the Bible and showed her that that, that, was, in, that was unique to man only. And you know what? She's the woman that came for a while right back here. And sadly enough, she had never heard that and was in church her whole life. Yeah. See, that's, that's the garbage that's being taught today. And, and so we find that uh, we're set apart for God's design and purpose so that he might be worshipped even more. And so it is written, the first uh, man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last man, and, and the last Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Now he, he divides, and, and this wasn't when Adam... If Adam was regenerate, and I think he was, he was grieving over sin. Some people says he was, some people says he wasn't. I think you're straining at gnats. The, the fact is, the second Adam is Jesus. The second Adam is not the inward man. See, we needed something a lot better than the junk we have right now. The inward man, the never dying soul, we needed Jesus mm -hmm. so that, that this would be a right with God. Mm -hmm. And, and so we see that Paul begins to uh, describe the situation of mankind and our desperate need of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 46, how be it, that was, uh, that was not first, which is spiritual. In other words, he, ma he made the flesh first. But that, but that which is natural, the, the flesh you see this morning, the flesh that is speaking, and afterward, that which is spiritual. Now, everyone under the sound of my voice, you have a never-dying soul that will be somewhere, some, uh, someplace throughout the ceaseless ages, and there's not but two different places, and that is in glory, glorifying the Lord God, or it's in hell in the miseries that await us there. That is the two thresholds for the never-dying soul. That's it. And uh, what a gift the never dying soul was, but what a responsibility came with it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, everybody that believes grace says, well, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. You know what? That's a cop out. Mm -hmm. You're responsible for this never dying soul. It's a treasure, it's something noteworthy, it's something that sets us apart from everything else. It's a, it, it's a precious gem. And, and so we find then that being set apart also brings great responsibility. And you know, uh, uh, it's just, you know, our government today is so corrupt, it's about destroying responsibility. You know what? Uh, three years ago, I got my student loans finally paid for after I'd been out of school for 25 years. And now our crazy president is giving everybody $10,000 to pay theirs off. I want my $10,000, and Donna wants hers too. See, that's not realistic. If you make a debt, 
It's your responsibility. People don't believe that anymore. But let me tell you, your sin debt is your responsibility until Christ takes it from you. It's your responsibility. And the only, the only payment is death. The only payment is death. And, and so it would do you well this morning to look within yourself and make your calling and election sure and be certain that you know the person of Christ. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now, if you have any questions about the two distinctions, you find it very clear in, uh, in uh, verse 47, the first man is Adam and the second man is Christ. And you know what you need? You already have the first one with his corrupt nature. You need this one the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were called Christians at Antioch. They were first called Christians at Antioch. And you know why? Because they were set apart and they had a Christ-like spirit. They had Christ-like behavior. They went about spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find then, we find ourselves in a very tough situation wherein we desperately need the person of Christ. Verse 49, uh, excuse me, verse 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. Now here we find a measure of redemption. If you're worldly or earthy, it literally says dirt. It literally says of the earth. Then it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out you've never tasted the goodness of the Lord. Now, what I have found through uh, uh, 28 years of ministry, you can't browbeat people into doing nothing. Because as soon as the browbeating's gone, they'll be back just like a hog in slop. <laughs> and you know why? They're earthy. That's their nature. And you know what? Hogs is going to roll in the slop because that's their nature. That, that's who they are. That's what they do. And mankind is bent towards sin, and if Christ doesn't intervene, that is what we'll do. Right. And, and, you know, this sounds bad, and you see behavior from people, and you wonder about it. You know what I found with sinners? They like to cause trouble. Wherever they go, whatever they do, if they cause a little trouble, they're just like a pig in a slop. Mm -hmm. That's man's nature. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't understand that in the ministry, you soon get discouraged out of it. But that is just man's kind. And so with that knowledge, what they, they don't need to be browbeat. They need Christ. They don't need to be beat up. They, they need a real experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find out very quickly in verse 48 the condition of man. Verse 49 and as we have borne the image of the earthy, and we sure do, we look like the world, we act like the world, we present like the world, then after redemption, we ought to be able to present like even unto Christ. Yeah. Now that, that, is, that is who we ought to be. Uh, we live in a very earthy day, do we not? We live, we live in a day where people are blinded to the true gospel. We live, we live in a day after getting saved, nothing else is ever expected. That's sad, isn't it? Yes. When, the Bible, when the Bible speaks so clearly of fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. how you to come out from among them and be you separate, and we're satisfied with something like that. God help us. And then we wonder what's wrong with our churches. So we find then, as the Lord's people, identify the earthy in yourself. You know, when you're saved, and that's what the context of this whole scripture is, when you're saved, you still got this monster to deal with. Every day and it's earthy it is 
desires the things of the earth more than it desires Christ. But the inward man needs to come out on top. The inward man that desires the things of Christ and loves the things of Christ and loves the person of Christ should be the one in the driver's seat. And, and that's, a, that's a constant dichotomy between the, re, uh, between the redeemed and even their own flesh. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, again addressing the brethren and the sisters at the church at Corinth, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, get that one down to you because we all, and, and every one of us, I mean, if you got one eye and half sense, as Mother used to say, you sure like to go in the rapture than laying it down out here. That's not your choice, but quite naturally, that's what we prefer. But you remember when, when Moses got so close to the Lord near the end of his life, and he says, Moses, you can't see me. It'll kill you. Yeah. He said, I don't care. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> see, that's getting near where you need right. to be, ain't it? Uh, but here we find very explicitly, whatever the glorified body is, we need it desperately. Because until then, we can't see Christ in the flesh. You, you remember uh, you remember when uh, Paul saw the Lord on the road to Damascus? That's what made him the apostle born out of time. He had that apostolic difference. It impacted his flesh for the rest of his life. He never could see well again. And you know what? If I, if I read that correctly, he besought the Lord, but he got to the point he was okay with being very, very difficult to see. And you know why I think he was okay with it? Because he had seen Christ. He had seen Christ. And, and, and so we find then that laying aside this flesh is very, very much a reality that each and every one of us need to face. Death is coming. Death is, a, it, it's very mu Death is as much a part of this life as eating is. Eating is a daily occurrence, and some of it, I, I like to eat. I don't like to think about death too much, but it's just as much of a reality, is it not? And, and, and so we see then as the Lord's people Instead of being fearful at these, what we need is acceptance. Okay, this is what God has designed. And you know what? Has God's design ever been bad for you? It hasn't for me. <laughs> now, it may take me 30 or 40, 40 years to see it, but I always look back and see that God's been good, and he knew a lot better about the situation than I did. And, and, and so we find... We find then that uh, we need to look at the putting away of the flesh in the right way. Verse 50 again. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Right. Now, to inherit something, what must happen? If you inherit your mother and daddy's place, what has to happen? Mother and daddy both have to be gone, right? That's an You know what? What a wonderful, glorious gift that we might inherit incorruption that Christ died in our stead. See, he, he, he's the one that died. He rose gloriously again on the third day. But the reason that we have that inheritance of the new flesh is because that Christ died for us. And without that, without that, without that glorious event, we would still be a people most miserable without any hope whatsoever. Verse 51, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall be changed. Now, everybody knows that I like mystery like murder mysteries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, 
The, good, the thing about a mystery, at least on TV, right? It always gets solved. <laughs> right. they, they have the right information. They're in the right place at the right time. So can, if we're careful, cannot we see the mystery? When he says, I show you a mystery, it's not entirely blank to us. It's not entirely a deep fog. But he begins to pick out things and says, I'm going to show you about this mystery. I'm going to show you what's amazing. I'm going to show you, you're not equipped right now to receive heaven, but boy, you're going to be one day. I'm going to show you the mystery. Now, when you're young, this flesh seems okay. But when you got a few miles on you, then you begin to understand about the corruption of the flesh a lot better. <coughs> Had a friend, in fact, she lived in the very house we tore down right here. That put uh, she put this on Facebook the other day, and I was like, Barbara, man, you right on point. She goes, you enjoy them twenties and thirties and forties, because when you hit your fifties, the check engine light's going to come on. <laughs> and boy, she was right. And that begins. That makes you begin to think that this body is maybe not all that it's cracked up to be. That there is problems with it. And the problems are going to get worse and worse as, as the time goes by. And so we see, look for the mystery. Look for the answer to the mystery because it's there. And the answer to a new body is very simple. It's the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know Christ? Have you put your full faith and trust the very being of your essence, your own soul, laid flatly on the merit of Christ? That is redemption. That, that is salvation. That's the mystery. And then he goes on to say in verse 52, an exciting news for us that are redeemed. In a moment. Now, in last time it took me to read those two words, I twinkled my eyes, and y'all couldn't see them because I was reading. That quick, we're out of here. A moment. Less than a minute. Really, a moment's less than a second. We're done. We're done. You know, well, it takes change. For mankind to, to emit change, it takes a while. Now, I married a woman that's not too much on changing the house about, she kind of actually gets been out of shape about it. Uh, but I, my mother was a mover all the time when she was young enough to do it. And you come in and you didn't even know where your bed was. And uh, you, uh, it was a timely process though. We paint this building, this building is huge. We've been talking about painting the building on the interior. You know what? That's going to take some time. Uh, but God can do things in a moment. Literally change the entirety of all things in one moment. Just boom, and we're gone. We're done. We're out of here. We're through. And what a, what a glorious, wonderful day that will be. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Now, if you'll follow and study your Bible sincerely, trumpets were always used to direct God's forces. In the Old Testament, when they were possessing the land, they would listen to the trumpet. At the first major city, they were to walk around the walls of Jericho, and then they were to blow the trumpet around and around. And then the last day, they brought them some uh, dishes to break. And they went around, and they hoped, and they hollered, and they blew the trumpet, and the walls came down. And after that, <laughs> Uh, what was it says? I think it's in Samuel. If, there, if the 
if the horn or if the note be without significance. In other words, you don't, they blow a foul note, and you're like, what does that mean? What am I supposed to do now? You don't recognize it? <clears throat> See, you won't have no trouble recognizing this one. <laughs> blue, blue. We're out of here. Done. Finished. <laughs> Home with the Lord. But now you have one big problem. Maybe two. <laughs> now, my big problem is this. If you lost, your big problem is the inward man and this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have one big problem. Weighs about 189 pounds. And I'll be done with it. And you yeah. know what? I'll be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so we see that as the Lord's people, we're going to be newly equipped. We're going to be different. We're going to be, we're going to be not the same anymore. In a moment, in the twinkling of the light, I at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So we have David out here, <clears throat> buried in the lot beside the church building. If he was a redeemed man, at least at the moment, he's before us a little bit. If he if he was a saved man, his his soul is already going to be with the Lord, but that problem still remains. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, David was kind of like myself. He certainly wasn't the picture of health most of his life. But, you know what? His flesh is really no different than the most healthy person you could imagine because you know what? They all end up six feet under. From the most healthy to the most disease-ridden, they all end up in the same place. Have you ever thought about that? No matter how good they look, no matter how strong they may be, they're going the same way I'm going. And you're going as well. Every one of us, everybody under the sound of my voice, death is an appointment that you must keep. And my friend, you will. And the reason for this to be good news to you is that this flesh will be changed. And those that of you that are lost, look unto Christ, trust Him fully. That's all it takes. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it difficult. If Christ has show, shown you your condition and has shown you His sufficiency, that's salvation. Uh, that, 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 that is redemption in and of itself. He'll manifest Himself to you. Yeah. Verse 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. Now, we are mortals. We have no... Uh, no... Uh, this flesh doesn't have any eternity about it. You know, I was uh, uh, used to take care of this woman when I did home health very, very recently, the job I just quit. And every time that I would go out there and, <laughs> and tend to her feet, she had wounds on her feet, she had bewitched on. And I wanted to throw a rock at her TV. And she was so ignorant of it. And you know what? She was some sort of Baptist and she wore skirts all the time. Every, I never seen her in anything else when I did her wound care. But she's wrapped up in that. She goes, I know that's old, but I still like it. And every, every episode that I endured would talk about that one woman, that one witch's husband, uh, Derek, and criticizes him because he's a mortal. You know what? Every one of us is mortals. The witches, and, and listen, all that show was about was to get us used to the idea of witches. And we were too dumb in the 70s to think about it. All, all, that's all that was about. But you know what? I've got news for the witches out there. You're mortals too. You're, you're facing death just as surely as I'm facing it. 
The end is near for you as it is for me. And so with that, there are no exemptions to the rule. You know, you, you have to work with the government stuff to appreciate the stupidity of the government rules. There is always an exception, but not with Christ. Not with Christ. All military wives are eligible to have health benefits, except <laughs> if you're divorced, you don't get up. <laughs> Depending, except how long you were married to him. See, and it goes on and on and on. But it isn't like that way with Christ. What he says goes. And if you don't know him, you're going to have two deaths. Yeah. yeah. And so this, this flesh has got to be dealt with, saved or lost. This flesh is what it is. Now, let me say briefly, and we're going to go on and, and wind this thing up. If you're lost, what you see is what you get. And you may be okay with that as a young man, but one day you're going to look like me. Right? That's right. One day your knees is going to fill out my knees. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And if you lost, you take that with you. Go. I am tormented in this flame. Send Lazarus that he may just dip it his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. You know what? The best I understand the word of God and eternity, that poor old boy, even today, his tongue's still burning. Everything is still intact. I'm assuming age continues. So the pains that come with aging, I'm assuming they're still intact. I don't see anything contrary to that, do you? They're not immortal. They're, they're like us. They, they age. Huh. You ever think about this? I wonder about old boy's hunger. I get hungry real easy, don't you? I'm assuming that he is because his flesh does not change. No, no. And, and, and so we see then <clears throat> that you need the second birth so you'll get the second body. So when this corruptible, verse 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, <laughs> the good news is this, there's two deaths, and the good news is, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, one of those deaths had been completely taken care of in victory. And that is the second death. That is the spirit man. That is when you, that is when you leave this place and go to the next, you'll be living forevermore in a body that we can't even comprehend. That we can't even comprehend. You ever had a sick baby? Adam was our sick baby. I know you would never believe that by looking at him now, but he was our sick baby. And every time he turned around, something else was going on with that. Uh, that's going to be put away someday. It's going to be different. Our bodies are not going to be prone to illness in any way. Like I said, Adam was kind of our sick baby. We didn't have the trouble, some did, but it was a sick baby. Mothers, you know this better than me, and as a nurse, it would frighten me. At one year old, I was still at my birth weight, seven pounds and 11 ounces. That raised an eyebrow, wasn't it? That would be devastating. Like, what's wrong, what's wrong? None of that there, a new body. <laughs> yeah. Totally different. Don't understand it, no illness, no pain, no nothing that threatens death. Uh, if I was still a nurse in glory, I would be out of work. 
because there would be nothing to do. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? It still has a sting. Now, we don't want to admit it, but none of us are like wanting to get on the next bus, are we? Because there's a sting to it. Let's face it. Death is not a pleasant thought, is it? No. I'm not too worried about death, but I am worried about how I'll get there. Mm. My sister. She didn't get the death she would have picked out, and I know that. The day she was diagnosed with cancer, I took her to the... We took, we took her and we talked to the oncologist. She weighed in that day at 215 pounds. The day she died, she weighed 115 pounds. That's not much of a way to go, is it? So there is a thing to it. It's stung. It stung me to see. It stung me to see my sister in that shape. And that's just a pretty thing, right? A thing. But you know what? I'd a whole lot rather have a sting than, as the Bible says, be cast alive into hell. Because, see, the burn there is never over. The burn there is never done. You know what? When I was a kid, I got a sting. I was like, ah, and sometimes I might even cry a bit. Fifteen minutes, it was over. That's a sting. Eternal misery is quite different, is it not? Eternal pain. Listen, we don't even understand what eternal pain would be. We, we get upset at the time and all don't work, right? Can you imagine eternal, excruciating pain? That is what hell is about. <laughs> the sting of death is sin, but the strength, excuse me, verse 35, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, part of each and every one of us. But the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God that giveth us, us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the difference between my death and the death of the non-saved. The condemned. The ones that are on their way to hell. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. A few weeks ago, me and Don was putting up that court board back there. And as usual, we were getting a little frustrated and trying to get it straight and trying to hold it and nail it and all this stuff at the same time. Y'all know the sequence. And I looked at her and she was sweating. And I said, I bet this is not what you thought you were signing up for. And you know what? Just like me, <laughs> that's, that's part of it. That's hanging in. That, that is working. You know, it, you know what the problem of Armenian doctrine is this, is everything is smooth sailing after you accept Jesus. Well, I, the Lord saved my soul over 40 years ago, and I've had more rough waters like old Peter than I have smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. So just keep working. If you're saved and redeemed and born again, just keep working. Our reward is not here. Our reward is yet to come. Yeah. It's in a different place, in a different time. <laughs> and to get there, we have to be changed. Right? Yeah. So are you saved this morning?